Marsabit County, the second largest county in Kenya, 600 kilometers from Kenya's capital, Nairobi. It borders the country of Ethiopia on the north of Kenya. It bears a population of 459,785 people, one of the fastest population growth rates in the last 10 years according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. It is a land with great sceneries, large infrastructure, warm people, with a rich culture. However, there is a crisis in this county. Nearly half of its people are starving. People here are forced to walk as far as 40 kilometers in search of food, water, and pastures. Some parts of this county have not received even a drop of rain in the last two years. Now, children are sleeping on empty stomachs. Breastfeeding mothers are surviving on ready to use therapeutic food, and severe malnutrition is the order of the day. They watch their huge herds feed on the little patches of vegetation covered in dust and it is a matter of time before these huge herds paint their land with carcasses if nothing happens but they hold on to the faith that the skies are watching and will send some drop of hope onto them. The writing of optimism is on their faces but they don't know for how long they can hold on. 25-year-old Steve Lenarokushu was born and raised in this county. He is the first in his village to have a degree. Steve has witnessed the effects of the leveraging drought year in, year out. Steve, kindly share to us a day and somebody, let me say, somebody just right in this village right now, how they wake up to once they go to sleep. I can give a scenario mm -hmm. of, a, uh, of a child mm -hmm. who goes to a nearby school, maybe around 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers from his home. Yeah. So these guys normally wake up early in the morning. The first place there is no breakfast. So you can imagine the hardship of the school going kids here in, in Marsabit. Mm -hmm. So these guys wake up very early in the morning, mm -hmm. at around 7. Just take his shower, maybe, if water is available. Water is a big deal also. Mm -hmm. So just fix up his books, mm -hmm. go to class. Mm -hmm. You can imagine reading the whole day and surviving without even breakfast. Maybe there are some, some, sometimes you get food in school, maybe lunch. So when he comes home later in the evening, no meals again. So you have to wait for the next day to get At the lunch. School, lunch. Yeah. <clears throat> so sometimes when we have lunch in schools, it's even a motivation. Because you can these guys instead of staying at home, they have to go to school so that they can read, maybe possibly have a meal so that they can survive. Yeah. And even sometimes okay, let's say now there are no meals in school. You can hardly find kids going to school. They are very hungry, they are very weak. According to your point. Mm -hmm. These children are more of attracted to going to school, not to learn, but at least to find food. Yeah, at a situation like this now, uh, over this period when drought has really hit Marsabit, mm -hmm. these guys are, the children are mostly, most of them are, are being motivated, going to school, just uh, get a meal, mm -hmm. and even to read. However, during his studies, it came as a shocker for Steve that more than 5 million tons of food were going to waste in Kenya while more than 200,000 residents in his home county were sleeping on empty stomachs. It is with this logic that Steve has embarked on a journey to find well-wishers who can facilitate in offering at least a meal for as many households as they can reach while still helping out farmers experiencing food wastage. His only tool being 700 Kenyan shillings and the story to tell. So, to me, Manizana. After days and nights of awareness, this optimistic youth is able to reach and convince groups of well wishes, both locally and internationally. One group is the 4BM group. This is a group that seeks to reach out and advocate for the welfare 
of the forgotten bottom millions in a country where only 1% of the 47 million people are millionaires, leaving out 99% and the name the forgotten bottom millions for BM. It is through this group that Steve was introduced to Shina Raikondalia, who has been bothered by just how much food is wasted rotting away in farms in some parts of Kenya, while some other parts of the country people are starving. Motivated by her late father's selfless acts of charity, Shina joined the campaign to honor him, selflessly financing and following every step of the campaign. Together with your number one media station, A Farmers Media, this group embarked on a campaign to solve the hunger issue in Marsabit County, using produce collected from different farmers in the country, and which is predominantly drawn away due to overproduction, underpricing, and spoilage. Local solutions for local problems. Joining Hands is Control Tech Limited, a tracking and fleet management company that was going to solve the big question of ferrying food from these farmers to residents in Marsabit County. The first produce is collected here at Kitengela, Kajedo County, coming all the way from Namanga, 133 kilometers away. More of this produce is fresh produce. And so we embark on a 600 kilometer journey to one of the hungriest counties in Kenya. But before then, we have to pass through a few farmers and pick some produce before heading to Marsabit. My name is Brian Munda. And I'm Later, we arrive at the second food collection point here in Meru County. It is one of the rich food baskets in the country, but farmers here complain of low prices and high cost of farming that is leading to low produce that is not competitive in the market. <laughs> David Kaimenyi is a seasoned farmer. For today, he is lucky to sell off some of his produce, a relief because on a normal day, it will be difficult to clear his produce and still make profit. Five years, yes. we have a market. Yes. This is food waste. This is yes. pure food waste you can see here. Yes. Today we have collected some of the good produce. Yes. We have a lot of yes. They are starving right now. Yes. Are you happy about the initiative? I'm very, very, very happy mm -hmm. because uh, today mm -hmm. I feel I've, I have touched somebody's heart. The way I see in the TV, mm -hmm. people are suffering. Mm -hmm. And we are throwing food away here in Melo. Mm -hmm. the, the food that I've given away. Mm -hmm. It is going to, to help somebody and to save their hands. Further. We load the truck with more produce. These unlooking farmers hope we can pick some of the produce, but for today, that's the much we can do. With 300 kilograms of cabbage, 3,000 kilograms of skuma wiki, and 2,500 kilograms of cereals, including beans, rice, and maize, we have at least played our part in curbing further food waste. Yes. This is the second day. Sure. Do you feel you are closer to the objective? I think I think we are almost there. Uh -huh. And it's since it's the beginning of the of everything. Mm -hmm. As now we we were targeting to uh, our main objective is to no, no, uh, we cannot tolerate any more mm -hmm. food to rot in farms. Mm -hmm. Lying everywhere, there's no prices, there's no logistics, mm -hmm. and people are still starving, starving in Masabit. 
And so we embark on a 464 kilometer journey north to solve the second crisis, hunger. On maps, you will easily mistake this for an eight hour journey. However, this is not the case. It takes us about three hours to set foot in Laisami's shopping center, Marisabit County. And this marks the end of Tama for us while ushering the beginning of 250 kilometer rocky, dusty, and insecure off-road experience to our first distribution point at Arabal. With the terrain here, the best one can do is 20 kilometers per hour. The temperatures here read 36 degrees at quarter past 6 p.m., signifying more advanced temperatures during the day. These are the scenes here. Children leaving their hard home after a whole day on this arid vegetation on look with hope that someone can at least quench their thirst with a few drops of water and the little they get, they appreciate. Two hours into the rough road, my driver is exhausted and sleepy. His voice too is lost due to the inhaled dust. He asked me to drive the team and within half an hour, the whole team has fallen asleep, including Steve, who is supposed to give us directions right here in the middle of nowhere. It is my job to ensure that we all arrive safe at Arabal, but I too don't know the place at all and with no network coverage to help me navigate by maps, however, we carry on. At some point, the truck carrying the produce gets stuck in the sand. We are first to come out of the car and help, but we are told that it is risky as the place bears desert snakes, scorpions and hyenas, and so we have to be careful. <laughs> Caught in between the option of waiting for help in the morning and the nature of the fresh produce in the truck, we opt to risk it all. So one hour later, we're still stuck in the middle of nowhere. You know, it is 11 p.m. and we are using the locals around to ask for some of this stuff and we hope that we're going to find a solution to some of these problems you're facing right now. After about two hours of trying and retrying, <laughs> We are finally off the hook. After another four hours of drive, we arrive at Old Road, one and a half an hour away from Arapal, which is our first distribution point, and we decide to take a rest as everyone is well worn out, sweaty, and dusty. Thanks. We eat up and have a two hour sleep, but not on your normal house. However, we need it more than ever. At daybreak, we freshen up and lay for Arapal. The journey is not better to the one here, and within one and a half an hour, we arrive at our first distribution point. These are the scenes that greet us here. All we have been seeing and hearing about residents here live on our eyes and ears. Children playing and showering by this water point, women fetching and carrying water as goats, camels, and cows quench their dust. Today is a lucky day, as this water, we are told, comes only twice a week and is supposed to serve a community with more than 200 households. These men here are deliberating on a reason cut to rage by their neighboring community that has taken away more than 400 of their community cattle, further threatening their food security. There are so many cases of malnutrition also here. Most of our resources have been taken. So next time, I don't know what we, we will have next for our school children. You say vulnerable. Uh -huh. How do you describe vulnerable situation? Apart from, you know, the fact that they don't have any cows in the land. Mm -hmm. So in daily life, mm -hmm. so in terms of vulnerability, mm -hmm. and you can consider now it's a, an emergency mm -hmm. due to drought. Mm -hmm. These guys can hardly afford a meal mm -hmm. in a day. Mm -hmm. They can hardly get breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, mm -hmm. or even supper. 
so they are totally surviving. So they can maybe they eat even after two days, mm -hmm. maybe three days. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes they just they survive on water. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is what I can say about the vulnerability of the targeted assaults. So two days later, since our departure in Kajodo County, we're finally here in Arapal in Marsabit County. It's one of the hardest hit, both in terms of hunger and also in terms of raids, which is also traditional cattle rustling. But to be very honest, there are very many emotional scenes happening around here. People reacting different. The residents around this place are very happy to see food. But to be very honest with you, the team that has come with this donation is really emotional. Actually, these are some of the pictures that you're seeing. People are really emotional about what they're seeing here. Let's first cure the second disease, which is finding food for these hungry people. We start off loading food. Yes, people here on empty stomachs. But interestingly, we uphold the virtue of patience and order. <laughs> More interestingly, we are told that residents here have prepared a meal for us and ask us not to leave without sharing a meal with them. Once we're done eating, these community elders have a special ritual for us. At least 110 households in Narapal will have a meal on the table today. Now we turn our focus on the next distribution point, Yangalani, 77.1 kilometers away. But we live with one question in mind. Why locals here do not sell off their livestock to raise money for food? Lilian Naseku is a local here who explains it to us. <laughs> As we cross this terrain for hours, the worst we can hope for is the puncture of the car running out of fuel on these rocky roads. Temperatures here are reading way above 40 degrees at noon. Even these camels and goats cannot take it anymore. <laughs> at the shores of Lake Turkana, we meet these four young ladies. By their face value, one would easily assume that they are in their mid-teenage years. However, we realize that the eldest is only 12 years. The dyeing on the hair, we are told, is a cultural indicator that they're ready to be married off. They tell us that they have been walking under this coaching sun for more than six hours looking for their parents, but so far their effort has not bore any fruit. Now they're heading back home, and so we have to offer them a ride. At their destination, they are very grateful, but everyone in this care left with more questions than answers. One hour later, we arrive at Loyangalani, 580 kilometers of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, which is our second distribution point. The setting here is different from the one at Arapal. It is more densely populated, and apart from their pastoral way of life, they also fish from Lake Turkana, which is at their proximity. However, man must not live on fish alone, and so they need a more balanced diet. 8 p.m. is first approaching, and the much we can do is give some food to a few residents we can reach out to, while others are given more on the following day. Here at Loyangalani, up to 90 households are fortunate to have some food on their table for the next few days. 
and so will 45 others in Luai, a community not so far away from here. In total, the hashtag photo Marsabit campaign is able to reach approximately 2,500 people out of 200,000 in the county. According to Steve, more can be done. How often does this um, happen? How often do people come donate to residents around? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard mm -hmm. because uh, the voice of these guys is not being heard. Mm -hmm. Nobody is seeing their suffering. Mm -hmm. Nobody is watching. There is no TV. There is no even network. Yeah, that's interesting. There is no even network. Mm -hmm. So it's even very hard. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of negligence from leadership mm -hmm. of Sabit County, mm -hmm. especially the top guys. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can imagine these guys visit the, these people mm -hmm. only towards the elections period. Mm -hmm. Any other time, they are busy in Nairobi with their friends and maybe relatives mm -hmm. doing their own jobs. Mm -hmm. But um, residents are really tired. Join this food campaign to my service. Mm -hmm. Even as we embark on another 14 hour journey back to Nairobi County to be united with our families and of course catch some good sleep, our take home is that local problems can be solved using local solutions. All we need is to come together under the Food to Marsabit campaign. No more food waste.